Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today I'm here in Aarhus, Denmark with Hans Christian, an organic farmer and product di director for Agro Intelli, which is very interesting. Could you tell me a little bit about what you do? Yeah, we are producing an uh, autonomous uh, implement carrier called Robody. So it's uh, taking out uh, the tractor driver from the tractors and uh, supporting uh, the farmers in doing uh, different tasks in the, in the field. Our concept is uh, having like a standard uh, implement carry. You can put on standard implements you have from your from your farm, so you don't have to buy new implements. Uh, you can use what you ever used before. So it's a versatile implement carrier. Yeah. That's really neat. So you can attach your implement, and it will pull it through the field. Yes, exactly. And you don't have to be in the ends to turn it around. It will turn around itself. So we we try to make it very intuitive and very simple to use because we know our customers is is farmers and yeah some of them are getting a little bit old so uh, some of them might have been able to to use the auto steering but some might not so we try to make a very very simple system but I can show you you later also yes I would love to yeah. and so you really don't even need to be in the field when the robot's operating no that's uh, you don't have to actually you can uh, monitor it remotely so you can sit in your home office and maybe have ten robots running out in the field and then just log on to your screens and and see what it's doing and then you can drive around and control the, the job it's doing and make sure everything is in, in order. Instead of sitting in a tractor cab and you have the big seaters behind, it's very hard to see. You might have some sensors, but still it can be very hard to control the, the job you're doing. In this situation, you can walk behind while it's driving. You don't have to, to worry about uh, sitting in the cabin. Wow, I can't believe that. This is really the latest technology in agriculture. Exactly. So how long has this robot been developed for? Yeah, it's actually have a long history back. It comes out of uh, Kongskill, a Danish uh, implement manufacturer. But this company, Agrintelli, was founded in 2015 by uh, our founder, CEO, uh, or former CEO, Ole Green. Um, and so it's, it's been a project uh, working in the background. And then in 2018, 2019, it was decided to go commercial with, uh, with the product. And uh, today we have uh, 35 outrunning uh, commercial activities uh, around the world, actually. And uh, of course, we are hoping to expand a lot uh, the next couple of years because we can see there's a high demand for this technology because shortage of labor is just a general uh, <laughs> problem all over the world. Uh, yes. Wherever we travel, it's, it's a problem to get farm workers because the farm workers that are left, they should more, probably do a more uh, uh, observing job than, than sitting in, in, a, in a cabin. It might be better they go around and control the, the seats are placed in the right depth and, and stuff like that. But uh, that's up to the farmers. But we can just see there is a high demand for, for these uh, technologies. Yes, and then when you're not spending as much time in the field, you can spend more time uh, optimizing your crop and your soil. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we also see farms are also getting bigger here in Denmark, but we can see uh, fewer fewer uh, manpower for uh, managing more hectares and that means in the end you are only yourself uh, left and if you have to sit in a tractor cabin all the time you won't have time to do all the management uh, part of it yes. so so i think we are moving towards this uh, wherever we go that is really incredible and especially on such labor intensive crops for example are we standing in front of a strawberry patch? that's uh, i think it's one of the most highly labor intensive uh, crops so we have rented the robot for this field and we actually just leave it running all the time, almost, 24-7. Really? Yeah, because... Continuously uh, picking Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it's done, we just start it over again and just keep the soil moving. So this robot is able to both seed the plant and weed the crop? Yeah. yeah it's a mess. He can share some uh, videos, but uh, we planted it with the robotic. We put on a planting, planter machine, and then um, after planting, we, uh, we just started the weeding. So we just continuously keep weeding it to weeds away. Normally this is a crop that takes many, 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 many hours of manual labor. They're going around with a, a hack or something. But we can minimize this to, to a minimum because we can't find any manual labor to, to do this. So either I have to do it or Mass has to do it and we don't really have the time for it. Yes, we are having those problems on our farm as well. Yeah. And it really makes it difficult to be a farmer in these times. Exactly. 
exactly. The robot uses more precision than a human could. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When we started this uh, self-picking business, we used a tractor. By the end of the season, I almost uh, taken out all of the strawberry plants because I couldn't drive precise enough. I was driving without auto steering, and so every time I had to look back, then uh, I was out of line when I turned around. Oh, that so then the straw, yeah. So the strawberry plant was gone. So we. We can do this with very high precision over and over again. This is just a program that's in your body. When it's done, we just do the same again, and it will do exactly the same operation. So it's RTK GPS like you have on a tractor. It's that's the same, nice. yeah. And what crops is this robot able to seed and weed? Actually, no limitation. Uh, everything. Really? We go from strawberries, we can go to uh, corn, maize, um, yeah, faba beans, salads, uh, yeah, no limitation. It's just a matter of the implement you put on. So that's that's the focus, yeah. How many implements would you say are in use in Denmark right now? I would say 25, 30 different implements are used here in Denmark. How long has this robot been available for purchase for farmers? Yeah, since uh, 2019, uh, the early model was uh, was introduced. And then, of course, we advanced a lot. Two years, the, the sales have increased a lot with this uh, new model we call the 150D. The 150D has uh, two engines in it, so we have uh, one engine with uh, 75 horsepower for propulsion and also uh, using the hitch, and then we have another 75 horsepower engine for for PTO implements if you need a power takeoff. So in this situation, I only use one engine because there's no uh, power takeoff on this uh, implement. But if I was going to uh, run with a with a mower, slasher, or something. Then I'll turn it into two and then 75 horsepower is dedicated to the, to the mower. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah. how much weight is the robot able to pull for an implement? Yeah, the pulling force is a little bit different, uh, difficult because, uh, because it's a low weight. So one of the key targets also here is to minimize the soil compaction. Yeah. We don't want to destroy the soil. And that's why we want to go for, for smaller implement carriers that are not weighing that much. So it has a it has a way of uh, weight of three tons, uh, robotic three thousand kilograms. So the pulling force is uh, minimized by the weight because it's a matter of how much uh, traction you can you can move to the soil because you're not weighing that much. But it can lift an implement of twelve hundred and fifty kilograms uh, in the hitch. Oh wow, yeah. that's quite a bit. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, it takes most uh, implements. I would say standard implements that fits in the, in a robotic like that for three meter implements. And are there updates for the software that farmers will do as, yeah. as they use their robot throughout the years? You will not uh, you will not see any difference from having a robot than having an iPhone or something. Sometimes you get a message that uh, you need an update, the same robo robot you get. And then you can accept it or you can wait a few weeks because you want to make sure there's no bugs in it. So <laughs> <laughs> you know that. But that's, that's how it's working. So when the farmer turns on, it might say, OK, you need an update now. And then you just wait a few minutes and then the robot is updated. And, that, and that's lifetime updating uh, of software. That's included when you, when you buy a, a robot. That's great then. Yeah, yeah. That you need to have that confidence because this is a completely new technology. Uh, there's only a few on the market. Uh, actually, there's, there's two uh, very big Danish uh, robot manufacturers, but also in the US you have one called Goss uh, Sprayer. They're spraying, they have a very good success. So, so it is, it's still an, an early uh, <laughs> adaptation uh, market here. And for me, it's also a matter of uh, the farmer's perception of this, because it's, it's a whole new uh, way to think of his farm, how yeah. to do it. It's not just to buy a new tractor. This is different because now you're leaving it up to technology and software to, to run in the field. But you, uh, you're also a farmer yourself and, and sometimes you sit in the cabin and you press a button in the end, and then you can actually relax for maybe half an hour until you're in the, in the other end. This is very close to being autonomous. You're just taking the steering wheel in, in the end and then turn it around. That's what your body is doing for you here. Yes, So that is just amazing. This is the first time I've ever seen a robot in yeah. action. Yeah. I can't believe it, it feels like something that would be so many years down the road and, and you have actually put it into action. Yeah, you can see it, it's running and uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not doing anything. It's uh, running by itself and, and stable. Um, because that's, that's another, uh, you can easily make a robot, but it needs to be very robust and it needs to uh, be farmer-like. They need to know that it's working all the time and no software problems or anything. And have good trust in yeah, it. Yeah, good trust, yeah. And that's, that's what we really improved the last couple of years because we were, we were early on the market and that's of course giving some, some bruises, but, uh, but we learned a lot. And that's why I can with confidence can say we have a very ro robust product today that we can sell to any farmer and uh, they can drive with it. That's great. Yeah. And how many 
models or trials and errors did you go through or years of trying new technology to come up with this model you have now? If you take the newer time, the basic construction has been the same for, for the life, last five, six uh, years, but it, it grew bigger because uh, we also noticed that the farm, they want some horsepower for, for pulling the implement. And then uh, in 2019, this 150D came and uh, just in this spring, we launched a, a new one, uh, same construction, but it's called the LR for long range. Um, so this, it has only have one engine, but you still have possibilities to get out hydraulic. And then we put in uh, 300 liters of uh, diesel tank in it. Because for example, at vegetable growers, we experienced they, they put the robot out in one corner of a very big field and then just let it run for days. To them, it's very important that they can just fill it up from home and then let it run. So that's why some of the reasons why we made a, a new model. This one just have a, a smaller fuel tank because there's, there's two engines that are uh, dragging out diesel. So it, it can't run for that long. It can run for 18 hours or so. Oh wow, that's, yeah, that's yeah. very long. But the other one can go for 60. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not very high consumption of uh, fuel. Uh, it is, um, it's a very good engine, this Kubota engine, 75 horsepower. So, um, so this is a robotic interface uh, you have on your, your phone or your tablet or computer. So when you are a farmer and you buy a robot, you get a login to a, to a home page. And there you can go in and then you can click on your robot. This is one is called Demo PR19. Uh, that's, that's how it is. And then you can see in here, you can actually see what plan it's running, uh, how, may, how long it's been running, remaining time for operation, how much it's covered. And then you can see here, there's a, a map here where you can see it running uh, in the field uh, live. Uh, you can click on what plan it's running. You can see that's what it needs to do still of the plan. I believe you can also press on, on coverage. And then uh, in here, you can actually also access uh, there's a front and rear camera so you can uh, monitor what, uh, what the work is, uh, is doing in the field. If you for some reason sit at, at the office or sit at home, then you can log in and see if uh, if it's okay what That's it's doing. That's really great then. Yeah. So you can find out everything about your robot and tractor basically from your iPhone. Exactly, exactly. And you can go in and get some basic details. Everything is okay. Oil temperature, water temperature and, and stuff like that, just to make sure everything is okay. You have a logbook in here. You can see what it's been doing for the last couple of days. You can actually, you can log in directly into the robot here. Then you, there's a terminal on the back of the robot. That's what you see here as well. So you can go in and see all the telemetrics on, the, on that part. Um, and you can actually also stop robotic here from, from this phone. This is amazing. And so you also have a implement that will weed between the strawberry plants and detect the strawberry? Yeah, or that's... Um, that's the good thing about uh, Robotti, that we're not really locked to any specific implement or uh, any specific, specific operation. We can actually attach pretty much all implements. So the latest uh, work we've done, we've done it to be, together with a German implement manufacturer, Kult, uh, they called. So they, uh, they made an inter-row uh, weeder, and that means uh, there's some camera guidance on it, and then it's detecting the plant. And then it can actually weed in between the in, in between the plants in the in the rows. That's that is uh, just awesome. That's uh, that that will take the, all the manual labor out of these strawberries. That's the last thing we need here. If we had an inter-row weeder, then we will not have to do any ma manual labor here. And strawberries are a very labor-intensive crop to grow. Exactly, it takes a lot of uh, manual labor. I think uh, it's estimated for 800 hours per hectare to grow strawberries, at least here in Denmark. And when will these strawberries be ready to harvest? Yeah, these are actually for next year, but uh, it's it's the first year crop, and that's we don't we don't sell it. These are planted uh, two months ago, and then uh, next year uh, in June they will be ready to to harvest. So it's just the plant is growing, and it's and uh, making the root and everything, uh, so getting ready for for next year. So uh, yeah, it takes it takes a year because we are planting uh, bare root plants. They're called. So they, they take some time to, to develop the root system and everything. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Okay, bye. Bye.